That's a picture from the New York Times of the uh, swearing in, January 1st, 2007, of uh, former New York Governor Elliot Spitzer. That's his proud wife, Silda, standing in the background, looking at her husband as he said this vow, I, Elliot Spitzer, do solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of New York, and that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the governor of the State of New York according to the best of my abilities, so help me God. A New York Times article that went on to write that after he said that vow, Quote, a cheer rose from the guests. Go get him, Elliot. And then this week, you know, this news story broke. He, uh, of course, had just been outed as being part of a prostitution ring and participating in that. And what my wife, Fran, and I couldn't stand about the story as it started to unfold, especially, um, were the pictures in the newspaper. And in our newspaper, the Globe and Mail, the picture of his wife, Silda, on the front page, her face. And then the picture of his daughters on page A13. Fran said, they're just so beautiful. And rising up inside of you and us was the question, how could he? He'd made a promise to the people of New York in that vow, that oath before God. And he made a promise, I presume, when he wed his wife and said, I will be a husband to you. He made a promise implicit in being a dad to his daughters that I'll be a good dad for you and a role model in how I love your mom and show you what it means to have a relationship with a man. And I found myself getting angry at the man. I'd get angry, and then after that subsided a little bit in the spotlight, turned around like it always does, I thought, there, but for the grace, but for your grace, God, go I. Who of us has not broken a promise that was made before God, given that God's everywhere? Whenever you made whatever promise you've ever made, that promise to a loved one, to a coworker or a peer or a classmate or a friend, that promise you made to God that one time. Back when I was 18, I did what everyone did in our church, you know, grew up in this little Dutch cult in Ontario, and when everybody was 18, they all got up in front of the congregation and were asked these series of questions and said, I do, I do, I do, I believe this. And I, I, to the best of my ability, to the best of my abilities, like Governor Spitzer pledged, I said, I do, to these questions. Will you now stand, there was about 30 of us, in the presence of God and before his people respond to the following questions. You're standing there, there's your parents there, your mom's glowing, you know, your grandparents are there, it's a big day. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God sent to redeem the world, do you love and trust him as the one who saves you from your sin? And do you, with repentance and joy, embrace him as the Lord of your life? John Van Sloten, what is your answer? I do. Do you believe that the Bible is the word of God revealing Christ and his redemption and that the confessions of this church faithfully reflect this revelation? I do. Do you accept the gracious promises of God sealed to you in your baptism, and do you affirm your union with Christ and his church, which your baptism signifies? I do. And then last question, do you promise to do all that you can with the help of the Holy Spirit to strengthen your love and commitment to Christ by faithfully sharing in the life of the church, honoring and submitting to its authority, and do you join with the people of God in doing the work of God everywhere? I do. I cannot tell you how many times I have broken those promises. 
I am a chronic promise breaker. And you're not going to get the details. But I am a chronic promise breaker. And if we're honest and authentic and real and not joking around before God, we all are. And God sees it all. God sees promise breaking, the Bible teaches us, often sees it like someone like Silda Wall Spitzer would see adultery. So does the heart of God view people made by him for this, this beautiful relationship, going off and philandering and doing what they do. The book of Jeremiah God speaks through the prophet these words. How can I pardon you? For even your children have turned from me. They have sworn by gods, lowercase g, that are not gods at all. I fed my people until they were full, but they thanked me by committing adultery and lining up at the brothels. They are well-fed, lusty stallions, each neighing for his neighbor's wife. Should I not punish them for this, says the Lord? Should I not avenge myself against such a nation? And then later on in that same prophetic book, God says they turned their backs to me and not their faces. I read that this week and I think, is this the heart of God or is this the heart of Mrs. Spitzer or Mrs. or Mr. or Mrs. or you, your heart? when that happened. Is he speaking to them, some ancient tribe from a few millennia ago, or is he speaking to me? As I hear him speak to me, I go, God, I have. I live times in my life where I don't even think about you, give you a second thought or the time of day. And I'll make choices in the dark corners and shadows of my life to look at things and do things and consider things that I'm embarrassed to think you see me doing. And I turn my back to you, show you that way more than I show you my face. And were it not for God's promise to me in my promise breaking, I'd be finished. The camera flash bulbs would start and it'd be all over the news and I'd be done. Do you accept the gracious promises of God, John, sealed to you in your baptism, and do you affirm your union with Christ and his church, which your baptism signifies? I do. Promises of God sealed to me in my baptism. As I read the question, I thought, what were they again? Let the little children come to me, Jesus said, and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. This little big-headed Dutch kid. The kingdom of God belongs to this little baby. I'm establishing my covenant between me and you, says God, through to Abraham. My covenant between me and you, a covenant, a promise that includes your descendants, a covenant that goes on and on and on, a covenant that commits me to be your God and the God of your descendants, including me and you, if you were baptized. The promise is for you and for your children, Peter writes in the New Testament, and for all who are far off, for all who the Lord our God will call. God made a promise to his people and to their kids. I'll be your God, you be my people, you and your children for generations and generations and thousands of generations of those who love me. And that promise spoken then is as true now as it was then and it is as true a millennia from now as it was then and is now.